Today on Stuart Cox Family News. Earth could be hit by another powerful solar storm this week that is predicted to trigger radio blackouts and incredible northern light displays. Earlier this month, the Sun unleashed the most powerful streams of plasma, known as coronal mass ejections CMEs, in 20 years, causing communication disruptions worldwide. Now let's see the clip. For the first time in nearly two decades, a major solar storm is giving people around the world a chance to see a spectacular light show. The northern lights, usually only visible near the Arctic Circle, could be visible as far south as Alabama, but the storm could also bring some problems, potentially interfering with satellite communications, GPS, potentially even power grids. So what is the solar storm exactly? Well, it's called a severe geomagnetic storm, and it's caused by massive solar flares, plasma ejections from the sun, slamming into the Earth's magnetic field. Bill Cairns is joining me now for more on this. And Bill, we had a, a lot uh, about, we heard a lot rather, I should say, about solar storms during the eclipse coverage that was last month. And now it's really heating up. I talked to an astrophysicist today. He told me this is a big deal. Take a listen. If you still have your solar eclipse glasses from the April 9th eclipse, you go outside right now if the sun is up and look at the sun only with your eclipse glasses and you will see a monster uh, sunspot region. These are, this is a very active region of the sun. It is 124,000 miles across. So that's 15 times the diameter of the earth across. Yeah, it's huge. Uh, you need your eclipse glasses, though. This really underscores, Bill, that the sun is 93 million miles away, but we are at its mercy, right? Why is this affecting us? Uh, I mean, it just happened to be pointed right at us. So that huge sunspot that was erupting. So actually, this is a, an image of the, you know, we put this black here over this to cover the sun. And what you're seeing is what's shooting out from the sun. And that sunspot has shot out at least seven different, you know, mass ejections in the last three days. And it happened to be pointing right at Earth. So that's what's traveling through space right now and heading and hitting us. And that's why, you know, if you go right now, any of the webcams, any of the ski resorts in Europe, I mean, everything's pink the sky is just pink there's pictures from paris you know with the eiffel tower they can see this right now the northern lights and it's a pink sky across all of europe it's really incredible stuff so as far as our country goes this is the space prediction center you know you can see some of the pictures there that we're showing you this was actually from new zealand uh, earlier this afternoon they were hit by you know the first solar storm hit about one o'clock eastern time and the pictures that you're seeing there it was mostly focused to the southern poles so we call that instead of the northern lights the southern lights it was an amazing show for them. But now we're seeing it a lot more in the north. So this green line is really the southern extent of where we are predicting that you should be able to see it if you have clear skies. That's Salt Lake City northwards, Denver northwards, Kansas City northwards, St. Louis northwards, all the way just about Philadelphia northwards. Now, a little south of there, if you're in a high elevation and you're looking in the northern portion of the sky, you still may be able to see it a little bit at least. But of course, you need clear skies. And right now, we are locked in the clouds clouds all through New York, D.C., Philly, Albany, the Binghamton area. There's some hope it could start to clear early tomorrow morning before the sun rises, but that's not even a great chance at that either, Tom. Everyone, though, from the northern plains to the west, I mean, this should be an incredible show. You know, if you wake up tomorrow morning, everyone's out with their cameras. It should be incredible. You know, I was on a call today with the space weather experts at NOAA, and, and they said people should not panic, but there have been solar storms with more serious impacts in the past, right? Yeah, so they grade these, Tom, between you know, geomagnetic, so G, zero, you know, one through five. Five being the most extreme. We've only had like one of those. And it was all the way back in the 1800s, you know, and it, it caused like massive problems. So you can imagine before they even knew with technology what was going on. But some of the more recent ones, the last time we had anything like this was back in 2005. And then in 2003, on near Halloween, there was one that actually had, you know, disruptions as far as the power grid went in Quebec. Uh, that was a big issue. And there can be some satellite problems. Problems. I've seen, you know, I haven't heard anything officially released from Elon Musk or anything else, but I have heard that people have been losing their Starlink and they're asking, is it because of this geomagnetic storm? And those are the type of problems that we would expect to be seeing. Uh, you know, and Tom, I want to show you some of the things that we do know out of this one. So seven of them 
And we do know that that sunspot, we heard the guy say, it's about 15 to 16 times larger than the U.S. The first one was this afternoon. The peak tonight, <clears throat> as far as all of these storms, because they're supposed to be overlapping, is going to be from midnight to about 4 a.m. So if you want to time it where you live and head out, make sure it's before sunrise. But the moon's setting at about midnight, and that's the ideal time, Tom, if you want to get out there with your camera. I've seen people even just with their iPhones with a long exposure sending back some amazing images. You do not need, like, you know, uh, you know thousands thousand dollar lens yeah. for uh, yeah. for this show noah said today you may get a better picture and a better view on your iphone than your naked eye by the way happenstance i'm flying to iceland tomorrow right i just happen oh. to be flying to iceland <laughs> so i you. may get a yeah i may get a pretty good view right i mean yeah. as long as the plane can still fly and i suspect that there's no issue with that yeah, satellites are the issue. I haven't heard anything from any airlines about any of the navigation systems being harmed or anything else. This isn't like unheard of uh, in the airline industry. But uh, yeah, you want to go to Iceland? You're going to possibly see stuff like this, Tom. Now, it's, the peak is supposed to be tonight. Now, tomorrow night, they're still supposed to be about a G3. You know, tonight's like a G4, so slightly lower on the scale. But uh, I expect to see some uh, good pictures and stories coming from you. And maybe if there's an empty seat next to you, I should go join you. Uh, I'm, well, you'd have to kick my wife out, but um, okay, Bill. <laughs> Thanks. Or we just, you know, we can leave you here and I could go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's just what I'd expect from you. All right, Bill, thanks very much.